All right, welcome back to Everyday Race. Uh, today I'm going to talk about suspension once again. Uh, in a part one video, I talked about uh, spring rate. In part two, I talked about shock, compression, and uh, rebound. In this video, I'm going to talk about wheel motion ratio. What I mean by that is I'm going to find out how much wheel moves uh, compared to the shock and uh, you'll figure it out why I'm doing this so to figure that one out as you can see this bike got a bunch of links so by doing some geometry I could have figured out what the ratio is uh, but I decided to take another approach so First, I'm going to lower the bike from the bike stand. Okay, next I'm going to use my jack that I built a while back to lift the bike up. Okay, so I lifted the bike up. And as you can see, the rear wheel is uh, off the ground by a, a millimeter or two. I just wanted to unload the suspension. And uh, next... I'm going to unbolt the shock with the spring because spring makes it difficult to measure the amount of travel that the shock is doing. So for that, I'm just going to install this shock and I've already removed the spring from this shock so it'll be easier to measure uh, distance, how, how much the shock is going to travel so uh, for that I'm gonna need to remove this bolt and the bottom bolt okay I've removed the two bolts that was holding the shock to the uh, motorcycle so now we can go ahead and remove Shock. Okay, so the shock is out. Now I'm going to put this shock in its place. They're very similar, except this one doesn't have a spring attached to it anymore. That way I can see, I can measure exactly how much shock is going to travel. So let's go ahead and put this one back in, on the bike and uh, it's going to go the same way. Two bolts. I'm not going to tighten them up because I'm just going to use it for a mock-up. So let me go ahead and put, and put the shock on. All right, so I got the, uh, the shock is actually bottomed out on the on the bump stop it's kind of hard to see uh, and uh, now I'm gonna measure the distance from the center to the tail it's about 90 degrees so it's gonna be a pretty good accurate measurement so I'll go ahead and do that okay so the distance between the axle the center of the axle and my tail section is uh, 24 inches. So now I'm going to raise the bike up until the shocks is fully extended. Alright, so I raised the bike. So the wheel is off the ground. Easy to move. Now I'm going to measure the same distance from the center of the axle to the top of the tail section. Alright, so I uh, measured the distance from the axle to the tail section and uh, it ended up being uh, 31 and a half inches. So, since we know that the shock travel, this distance here is 2 inches and uh, we know that the wheel 
was at 24 inches from the axle to the tail section and now it's 31 and a half inches that means it traveled seven and a half inches but the shock only traveled two inches so to find the the wheel motion ratio we're gonna take seven and a half and we're gonna divide it by two inches and that comes out to 3.75 for this bike with this swing arm is 3.75 all right so I got the shock out and just to double check it's two inches of travel it's right at 1.996 inches so let's call it two inches What that means is that per every inch uh, of uh, shock travel, I'm going to have a 3.75 inches of wheel travel. So it's a, it's a very useful information uh, for me. Uh, it'll help me determine uh, correct spring and shock for my setup but since I'm a curious person uh, let's find out what this was on this bike when it had a stock swing arm uh, I'll use both of those uh, in the next video uh, in the next suspension vi video to show you uh, what the differences are so let's go ahead uh, and grab stock swing arm and uh, let's let's do some measuring all right so I got uh, I pulled my uh, stock swing arm out of the uh, storage and uh, because I wanted to know what the stock with the stock swing arm uh, that way I have uh, more information I can I can sort of um, uh, figure out how much more damping I'm going to need for my uh, for my shock with the longer swing arm so since I already found out the uh, which was uh, 3.75 for the way the bike sits right now uh, I can convert that uh, ratio to by using simple math basically I already measured uh, the distance uh, from the uh, pivot to to about here it was uh, 22 inches uh, on the old swing arm and I've measured the same thing on the new swing arm which was uh, 35 inches uh, what you have to do now is that we're going to take 3.75 the bike right now we multiply it by our old swing arm uh, length which is uh, 22 and then we divide it by the 35 inch uh, long swing uh, swing arm so we come up with a 2.36 so when this swing arm was on the bike and the wheel was around around this area was 2.36 so the longer the arm that you put on your bike and this is just a example for a Kawasaki ZX-10R uh, every bike is gonna have different setup lengthwise so you'll have to do your own measurements you can do the same way as what I just did remove the shock remove the spring put the shock back in measure how much the distance the shock uh, can physically move and then raise the bike off the ground measure the distance uh, from the wheel to whatever to the uh, tail section and then lower the bike down till the shock bottoms out 
and measure that distance. Then you take that distance, you take the bigger distance, uh, take uh, the smaller distance out of it, and then uh, you divide that by shock travel. And then you'll come up with the... And uh, that should be it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time.